video, a little video of um, how we get the planter ready and uh, how the planter works and uh, why we do it and what we do. If you like the video, keep liking, keep subscribing. Why should people subscribe to our videos? Because we're awesome. Uh, what else? Uh, loads of um, interesting farming videos coming up in the future. We try to educate people, don't we? Yeah, try to educate people. About farming. Um, yeah. Some machine demos. Machine demos and yeah, hopefully just talking about weird things that we don't normally talk about in farming. Like what? Mental health, how stressed out we get. I know all of you get stressed out and want to strangle someone after a day's work, but it's frowned upon. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to do some drone work now and we're going to have a little walk through what the planter does, why we do it really. So um, if you've never seen a belt planter working, they're, um, they're pretty awesome. Uh, normally you just had cups that pick the potatoes up. Right. But this has got belts that fire the potatoes. The belts so we can see. On the, the camera. Yeah, the camera behind us. Um, fires them straight in. You can see how fast they work. And they're pretty pretty accurate. I mean, I've got a few losses and misses on, the, on there now. So it's not as accurate as I was hoping. Like I've set my spacing for 9.3 inches. My average is 9.6. So it's a bit wider, but they're massive seeds. So you feel me now? Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> Fancy seeing you lot here. You're doing in my field. <laughs> um, basically, this is all basileared, as we call it. You can see the difference between fluffed up and not fluffed up. It's going to be a bit um, cloddy here because this is where all the muck was in a line here. So uh, it's been panned down with the loaders and stuff like that, where we've been digging it up. And uh, the basileer comes through, but look. This is bigger than what we'd like to see, but there's no moisture in the ground. These have sat on the surface and not broken up. Um, I didn't get a chance to power harrow this field down to break some of these up a bit and let the basilea do a better job. Do they just get in the way of when you're basically when you're getting the potatoes out of the ground? They yeah, just they'll, then... just, they'll ride over the harvest, you yeah. see, and then the cleaning system has more work to do. Yeah. So we want it like this, nice and fluffy, look. Nice and uh, clods are all, all like things like that will all fall through the harvester. Yeah, because they're quite small. Yeah, and then you've got over here where it hasn't been basileared. It's quite fluffy as well, but it's all coarse, real mm -hmm. coarse. So we'll go over to the basileer and I'll explain the basileer um, process to you. Oh, cool. So this is the basileer. Yeah, as you can see, we bought a cheap one and it has a slight leak. There's a bearing in there with a seal on. Right. And the seal's gone. Oh no. And um, for what we paid for this, we only paid 1,400 quid for it. And they're like six grand. Oh, right. So, we thought we got all the horsepower, we might as well use a double bed. When I say double bed, I mean it's wide enough to do two beds in between the ridges. Okay. So, um, yeah, we just, we bought it on a whim and thought we'd try it. And it all works okay, apart from the leak. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the Nemethorin applicator. The Nemethorin is um, put on to um, combat the uh, PCN problem. Potato cyst nematode. So, I can read it out here. Ooh, if I can read. <laughs> a contact nematicide insecticide for the control of potato cyst nematodes and a reduction of potato tuber damage caused by wireworm and reduction of spraying transmitted by free living nematodes. Well done. Yeah. You got so, that. Um, we'll try and go through some of the costs. Last time I looked, these were £320 each and uh, 30 kilos a hectare. It works out a lot. And they're now 400 quid each. So, each one of these 20 kilo tubs is 400 quid. So then you've got the seed. Each two and a half of these chitting crates is 600 quid. So, and then you've got diesel in the tractor is 500 quid a tank full. Yeah. So you use two tank fulls per 50 acres, I think. So the cost has started to add up already. We don't want to lose any. We want to applicate it correctly. So we've got a technique. I think it's a very cast. TerraCast. Put it in the top there. Put all your mask and everything on and gloves and everything. And then a metering unit in there and the fan blows it down and we'll see the funnels at the front there where it just uh, lays it in front of the basilier and that mixes it in uh, <laughs> tiger teeth where people are using horsepower and diesel to smash their land into a seabed and not having to put too much chemical on we're not using that much horsepower and that much diesel but we have got to spend it on the chemicals so. we don't like using it any more than you do because i've just told you how much it is <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah, my wallet's shrunk. Black soils and, and the fen soils really suffer with it real, really badly because it's so free working for us. It's so free living for them, if that makes yeah. sense. It's easy for them to move around in the soil. Right. Where the heavier and stiffer land and stuff is is probably... Um, 
They don't suffer yeah, quite so they bad. Don't, they don't suffer quite so bad. I, I don't know whether that's it or not, but these are the funnels where the nematorin comes out. Okay. So, um, so it's just pumped by air, by a hydraulic fan, and it comes out here, and then the basilier mixes it in. Right. So it's all mixed in the soil, so it's not sitting on the surface and stuff for uh, any animals and wildlife to get out. Yeah. So yeah, this is the, um, the business end of the basilier. As you can see, it's covered in string at the minute. His grumpy granddad's been uh, lazy and not cleaned it off. <laughs> but normally it's never covered in string. <laughs> um, but you can see the teeth that go round, well round. Yeah, so hundreds of these things go round and smash all the clods up. It's going round 1,000 thousand RPM. So if, if somebody says a bed tiller, that's what we mean. It's okay. just tilling all the soil up. Okay. And uh, smashing them all down, getting all the clods out and stuff. Yeah, and like I said, there's hundreds of them things, and they're like eight quid each. Right. But we don't wear these up. So every farmer has their own issues, but just depending on the on the land as yeah. to what issues you're going to have. <clears throat> yeah, exactly that. That is exactly it. And then we'll walk over to the planter. Cool. Right. <laughs> you get our film. Maybe. <laughs> That's our, that's our uh, new. <laughs> um, it's a reel out of that. There's an Instagram yeah, reel and a Mrs. TikTok. Mrs. Farmer done that the other day. She stepped off the planter she and said... then fell on a bum. Business end of the planter. We've got more chemical going on here in furrow to combat the PCM problem. It's a new, well, not new, it's about three or four years into uh, use now, I think. But we, we kind of thought that was a good idea because we suffer so bad from the PCM problem. Mm hmm. It's called Vellum Prime. I've gone through 15 litres of this stuff so far. It is £1,600 for five litres. Yeah, that is properly emotional. Every uh, two tankfuls of fertiliser I put on a tank full of this, just dilute it right down. I don't put very much on every time. It's only 600 mils a hectare. So over the over the whole area, it's not, not a great deal. So the stuff that you showed us in the blue tub over there, that is works... Is granular stuff, granular. Right, okay, and this is... Liquid. Okay. Yeah, both both for PCN. Right. Both for the um, potato stitch nematodes. Yeah. That are so free living in our soils that we have to do it. To combat the use of this, we are lengthening our rotation now. We're trying to go from five or six years to like eight to 10 years. So we use less chemicals. Okay. You know, think about it. Think about the environment. Yeah. And try and do our bit. Um, to use less chemicals. What do you mean by that? Like you, you'd have like a different crop on this after you've had potatoes? Yeah, yeah, I'll have like, instead of having like two years of wheat and then a sugar beet crop and then two years of wheat and then a potato crop, I'll have yeah. like three, four years of wheat. Right. Then maybe a sugar beet if I carry on growing it. Then have a sugar beet and then have three or four years of wheat again. So um, it really lengthens the rotation and gives the field a rest. Yeah. Gives the potato cyst nematodes a chance to not have any food to live on. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, um, then they die. They go through their life cycle and die off. So. So then, hopefully, you don't have to use, like you said, as much chemicals. Yeah. Yeah. So the next thing on our list of um, toys that we have in our armory is the fertilizer tank. Another right. technique. Um, this is technique as well. So we love technique. Tom, neat. How you doing? You owe me a beer on Saturday. <laughs> we get on real well with Tom, and um, we've got all of his stuff. So um, it, it's mega, mega equipment. Anyone has deals with potatoes either has technique or horstein right. uh, applicators and stuff but we technique is only up the road for us so we've got one uh fin would you call that a fin that goes in underneath the potato and then we've got one just a pipe on the top so it leaves it on the top and mixes it it mixes in as you um as we drive the planter over it right it mixes it all together okay so this one's going underneath the potato right this one's going all around the potato as you can see now about to get mixed in, so it don't really matter. Am I looking? Oh yeah! Oh yeah, cool. So um, yeah, that just mixes everything in. Do that one more time. Do it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> don't mind wasting my money, dear. All the all the vellum prime is pumped underneath the tractor pipes and stuff, and it gets to the outlets on the back here. This is um, Medema structural planter. Yeah, again another second hand buy from a local farm up the road. You put the potatoes in the hopper at the top here. Yeah. And then they funnel down here. And come along to this belt and then if you poke your camera up in the top here you'll see there's loads of potatoes in there right and then that belt funnel funnels the potatoes back they drop yep. onto there yep. there's a sensor on there that i have to adjust every now and again and then they drop onto these belts at the front here or, or underneath sorry should i say and then the potatoes all line up in a line like that yep get your potatoes in a row <laughs> and um 
and it and it fires them forward and drops down in behind the shoe here. Okay, cool. So we have a shoe here that makes an opening. Yeah. And we've got one Vellum Prime applicator at the front of the shoe. So if you look in there, you can see there's a nozzle there. Oh. One yep. nozzle there. Yep. That's firing it onto the floor behind the shoe. So it, yeah. it puts the vellum prime on in front of the potato. Right, okay. Uh, and then the potato drops down. And uh, as it's close, the soil's closing up, we have another nozzle here just firing on the back of the, like dampening the soil over the top of the potato. Right. So that's basically how it does. And this thing starts covering it up. Cool. They start covering the potatoes up. And then we have a ridging hood on the back here that, um, that leaves it nice and uh, a nice uniformed. Ridge. I think there's only one thing left to do. Drain. Teach you how to drive a tractor. Uh, no. No? Okay, we'll get the <laughs> nice GoPro try. out. What we'll do is we'll put the GoPro on here and you can watch. I can sit there and watch the camera. I mean, I'm doing it all day, every day. You can yeah. sit there and watch it below. Like, get it done. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but my my phone honestly is so. You're covered in dust now. Absolutely. Anything filthy. to get that action shot. Out. I know. Uh, the bell planters work on a, a law of averages. Rather than being precise with a cup that goes round at every exact time, cup planters are far more accurate, but belt planters are faster. Every everyone's going to belt planters now, really, because belt planters are so fast or so much faster. You know, big seed like Marquis, so you have to plant at 17 inches. Right. You know, this thing will fire them through there as like, hard as you want to go. Seven or eight K maybe. Maybe even faster than that. If anybody else goes any faster than that, let me know. Some some varieties go on at like 20 inches, you know. So the longer you can space them out, faster you can go with these. Right. Um, but cup planters, obviously your cups will be wanging around like, quick, I can't keep up. <laughs> but, they're, but they're bang on accurate, you know. Right. So um, these things work on a law of averages. So what you have to do is you have to dig up 10... 11 potatoes and then work out how far you are apart. So I was hoping to be somewhere between 10 and 12 inches with these. Maybe, no, 12 to 14 inches, sorry. So there's a lot of digging. There's your first one, look. About six inches down. So maybe it's closer to seven inches, that one. And you have to make sure you plant them the right way up as well. Right. You have to give everyone a kiss as they go in. <laughs> Let's just dig this one up and I'll show you. There's a the chit on the, on the end there, look. So that was at the bottom and that was at the right at the right angle. <laughs> yeah, it'll be right. You don't have to plant them the right way up. Oh. <laughs> Does it not matter? No, no, no. That, oh. what, what will happen if that's upside down like that? Yeah. The chit will come out and it knows where it knows where the sunlight is. Yeah, yeah. So nature's amazing really, isn't it? Yeah. It'll grow up and around the potato, but there's the chit that we wanted we wanted to get going. So it started growing already and it's already like two weeks ahead of the rest of them. So okay. we can plant a bit later. We can plant in colder soils and they'll They'll get going. So there you go. I'll plant that, plant that the right way up. Night night. Night night. So there should be one there. But they say never work with uh, children, animals, or potatoes. Oh, do they? Yeah. <laughs> if you're live on TV, because nothing ever goes right. Yeah. So there's another one. That's about right. That one's a bit, a bit wayward. So that's three. That's four. There's five. I'm so glad I've got these um, ankle gaiters on. Oh yeah. And my gloves, obviously, because there's nemethorin in here as well. So there's six. That's a that's a big gap, but they're big potatoes, so far too big a gap there. But you can alter that. Yeah, I can alter that. Inside like, there's a, the tractor. There's a massive gap there. There shouldn't be a gap there, see, unless I've missed a potato. What did I work that out? Yeah, there should be a potato in there, but it's missed one. Look. Right. So um, I'm not even going to bother carrying on because I know there's far too big a gap already, almost. Okay. What did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's missed one there. And 11, I bet there's closer to 15 inches, that lot. And what did you say you wanted it, about 10, 12? No, that was for the smaller stuff, but oh. these I want 12 to 14. So right. With, with a couple of misses, you know, it's, it's put the average right up. So that's okay. not what I want. So it's not good. So I would change that. Normally I would change that. But if my average stays right, yeah, 16 inches, that is. Right. Agri will want to be a lot closer than that. But there's two misses, so... If you take the two misses out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, we've got, hang on, let's take number eleven and put it over here. There was a gap here as well, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Should be about right. That's 11 inches, so yeah, it's not too bad. It'll take a bit of setting up and getting sorted out. But when I measured it the other day, they were bang on. <laughs> what can change? Well, it's just different sizes and shapes of potatoes, really. They're all roughly the same sh shape and size, but some are bigger than others. And the different shapes and stuff means you have to just adjust your sensors on here to get more on your belts going forward. Right. As you'll see on the GoPro, every now and again, there's a miss. So we've checked at a really bad time. Right. When it's not on accuracy. Well, these things happen. Yeah, 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 but the rest of the field's all right, you see, so. I've been watching the averages on there and it's been pretty good. So you turn up and start filming and it all goes horribly wrong. <laughs> You're all kerfuffled. Yeah. If you let, if you palm too far apart, they get real big and they end up with hollow heart. They're hollow in the middle and they're full of water in the middle. So. I don't want that for storage. I also don't want to plant them too close together and then they're restricted. Yeah. You know, they haven't got enough room to grow. We had the Babylon is a new, it's like a purebred agria, but better. Right. And uh, agria seems to be the number one chipping potato that everybody likes. Real rich, real creamy flavored potato. But yeah, the Babylon, we were the only farm in Europe that had the Babylon seed. Right. For, um, two, we had it for two years before anybody knew that we had it. So um, they chose us after a, uh, over any farm in Europe for, the, for quality. Nice. Um, you know, we're up there with the best of them. All right, we only grow 50 acres, so we're not a massive producer of them, but they're normally high-end, top-end quality. So, so yeah. Agrico is where we get all of our seed from, and this year's been a bit of a challenge trying to get seed, but we managed it. Yeah, Babylon is just like a purebred agri, but tillers more potatoes out on a root. So agri, okay. you'd be lucky if you get five potatoes on each root. Right. That's why we plant them real close together. Yeah. And the Babylon, maybe an inch or two further apart, Right. Um, because they throw like seven or eight tubers out of a root. So keep subscribing and uh, we'll have loads of cool videos coming up in the future. Cheers guys.